Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash pro revenge where people tell us their best stories and when they got revenge on someone or something they didn't like. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some pro revenge stories. Former boss botches me then tries to withhold pay when I quit, pays the ultimate piper when I push back. I consider myself a decent person and an above average employee. I worked for a medical office directly under a doctor for almost two years and was consistently facing issues with him from the start. He was aloof, unhelpful, didn't want to train or help establish protocol, just wanted me to run everything and take the fall for anything that went wrong. He was married with children, but flirted and slept with numerous patients and staff members. This isn't unheard of in this field, so I often just kept my nose down and tried to do my best job regardless of his after hour activities. Problems started to arise more and more though, as he hired people based on looks and his attraction to them versus their qualifications to do the job. I tolerated a lot of BS. But the last straw was when he wanted me to do some somewhat illegal activities financially and when I refused the games began. I could sense that he was unhappy with my unwillingness to do whatever he wanted me to willy nilly but didn't think he was upset enough to justify punishing me or trying to get rid of me in any way. Then literally all hell broke loose after a minor procedure I had him do for me. We were in good standing, or so I thought, and I thought nothing of having him do it all the time. What sucked royally is that he botched my procedure and caused permanent damage. That wasn't even the worst part, the way he dealt with it was. Instead of apologizing and offering to make it right, to which I'm pretty understanding and would have accepted, he denied anything was even wrong or had happened under his care. He went into total cover butt mode and methodically started to try and get rid of me without firing me, as it would definitely be wrongful termination, and the tension was becoming unbearable more and more each day. I was hoping he would make it right and we could move on, but instead every day was full of scrutiny of my choices and work and even a write up for a minor offence that I had no prior warning about. I could see the writing on the wall and realised he was going to wash his hands of me as quickly as possible to preserve his precious reputation which I could definitely disrupt now with his mistake with me. I noticed shortly after while on a planned vacation he was advertising for my job. I decided to quit then and there instead of to be fired. I was trying to fix the botch prior to quitting and hoping he would help financially. Nope, not gonna happen. Told him I was quitting and since we were under very abnormal circumstances that I would not be offering my typical two week notice. He was angry. He was late with my last paycheck in which he sent a snide letter with me telling me he was done with me and my care with him. I noticed that the check was short for two sick days I had taken after the botch. We are talking around $275 but it was still enough money that I felt rightly owed. I had a ton of sick pay left and didn't even give it a second thought until now and thought maybe he just forgot to add it. Nope, he responded curtly, saying I hadn't accumulated enough time to pay for the days. I asked to see proof of that because I knew I had enough time. He changed the accumulation date to another month and said tough luck, wasn't going to pay. I told him blatantly that this was wrong and that I would have to report it to the labour board if he couldn't show me proof. He just bullied me back and insisted it is what he says it is and again tough luck. He even said to quit contacting him about it or he would report me for harassment to law enforcement. So I went to the labour board. I brought in my contract and asked them about numerous questionable offences. 
they couldn't believe how many skewed things were actually going on that I had accepted because I didn't know or he had convinced me otherwise. They had me file for all the offences and said they would send us both a letter letting us know the medication date. Got the letter in the mail from the labour board and almost fell over dead right then and there. What was originally a $275 offence with the other minor claims and now penalties added from the labour board, the total was now $6,500. I laughed hysterically and couldn't believe it at first. I thought about him receiving the same letter that day and just reveled at the thought admittedly. Keep in mind he didn't know at this point I had actually went to the labour board as I promised. He didn't think I would do it, he thought he had won up to this point. Mediation day rolls around and he sits across from me with the mediator there and is steaming under the pressure now. We both share our sides, which he lied about numerous things of course, and then we talk separately with the mediator. She explains to me that my case may be hard to prove, being somewhat he said she said. She encourages me to kind of take whatever he offers. Before leaving the room with her, I bring up one more thing to her that I was unsure of and didn't ask about before. It involved him not paying overtime, and she lit up like a darn Christmas tree. Bingo. With that type of offence and me being able to show verifiable proof, he would have to pay the penalties starting at $6,000, and whatever the judge added after that. She went and told him of this new claim, and he fumed out of the building, saying I shouldn't be able to add anything at this point not the case at all, and that he needed to speak with his lawyer. I get a new claim in the mail with the added offence weeks later. The total is now $9,600. I die again laughing and just basking in the thought of him getting this new claim. There was no contact from him this whole time, but now suddenly there is an email sent to me in the sweetest tone I've ever heard him speak. He pleaded with me that he never meant to withhold anything from me and that he would like to settle all this peacefully outside of the court. Of course he would, I thought to myself. I forwarded the email to our mediator and told her that I did not want to respond and asked her to deal with him and let him know I wanted to continue the no contact he requested earlier. Weeks go by, we are creeping closer to a court day Suddenly, the offer rolls in, $4,000 and he will settle. I was set on $5,000 because of all the hassle I had to go through at this point. I tell the mediator to tell him nope, $6,000. Silence for another week or two. Then the offer of $5,000 comes. That was my number, so I waited a couple days, just to shake him up a bit more and then the mediator let him know I'd accept it. I received the payoff within a week, and then I got to wash my hands of him in the end. He thought he could cheat me and bully me, as I'm sure he has gotten away with in the past. I gave him a swift lesson that could have cost him just $275 to do the right thing, but now I'm going on a vacation to Hawaii and will sip a Mai Tai on his dime for trying to take back what I had rightfully earned and more. Well, uh, hopefully there's no permanent issues with that procedure, but I guess the Hawaii trip does make up for it. Yell at me and my staff? Fine, good luck running the office on your own. I used to work in a small family-owned doctor's office. A couple years in, they got into a legal fight and the experienced staff started leaving. Being young and dumb, I wanted to be loyal and ended up managing half of the doctor's office. The other half was managed by Brittany. She had a team of three that did the work of six. The company got bought and a new owner came in. He was like Danny DeVito in gold chains and a bad toupee. He was dumb and no one respected him. He screamed constantly about little things at anyone. He micromanaged and didn't bother to understand someone's job before telling them how to do it better. 
He tried to streamline processes without knowing how they worked, but mostly he yelled. One day, the hardest working person in the entire clinic, a nurse who started every appointment, was a few minutes late. She was a single mother and her kid was sick, so she showed up less than 10 minutes later than usual. Danny proceeded to berate the nurse in front of the entire office, scream about dumb things like being a few minutes late, then strange things like how she wrote dates, then absurd things like how her bedside manner sucked. She had gotten flowers the day before from a patient because she was so good. When the nurse put in her notice at the end of the day, Danny fired her on the spot told her to leave and never come back. I had been job searching and had actually gotten an offer. I was planning on giving a lot of notice but couldn't give notice if I'd be fired immediately. I had student loans and was paycheck to paycheck. I grabbed the two remaining members of the admin staff and explained that I was going to quit without notice before too long. Brittany understood and said she too was in the final stages of taking a new job. We agreed that we would quietly all find new jobs, then duck out when it was convenient. We had to quietly let all the other staff know, and each of us quietly started smuggling our personal effects out of the office. I had a start date two weeks out, but honestly couldn't give notice without risking my financial health. A week or so later, Danny started screaming about the colour of tape I'd use to duct tape down a power cable months before. I had used orange and yellow to make it more visible, but Danny said that was unprofessional. I asked him how he'd like me to fix it. Well, that's not my problem, that's yours. I paused for a second and said... You know, I don't think it is my problem. I'm out. I grabbed my small box of desk things as Danny howled at me. You will never find a job in this town. I own every doctor's office in this county. I don't need you since I've got Brittany. Brittany looked at him and said, Well, I'd been meaning to tell you that today is my last day. We packed our things and walked out, as Danny called the cops saying his employees were stealing things like their own birthday cards and pictures of their kids. We texted the third employee, who was on lunch, and explained what happened. It sounds like she didn't go back and without front desk, billing or nursing staff, a doctor's office simply can't run. I'm told they were closed for almost two weeks before they got temporary employees, but had no one to train them. Danny shuttered and resold the business a few months later to the big dog in the industry, which is a charity. Since their books are open, we saw that they bought the company, really just the clients list, for about 15% less than what Danny had paid a few months prior. That Danny sounds like a douchebag and he definitely deserved that, but how can you do that to Danny DeVito? So executive jobs are more important than mine, even if I'm the one who makes this thing go, then pay me for staying at home. My dad works in a company doing some engineering work. I'm not going to specify what for obvious reasons. The thing is that he arrived there several years ago, and since he is very good at his work, he rapidly knew how everything there works, where everything is, what you should do, etc. In the recent years, this industry here has been in a steep decline, so a lot of firing has gone on in the last 3-4 to four years. Until the closing is inevitable, but as some of you know, environmental regulation on closing industries can last for even years, applying impact mitigation. So my dad stood there more time than he thought because information is power. During the closing process, a lot of inefficient managers and executives have passed by the company because no one knows anything, except my dad. But as you may know, it is more important to save money keeping these people rather than really useful people. So my dad got fired. 
He took this in a very smart way. Saves a lot of money since he owns the house and has no debt, and he saw this situation coming years ago. Over the course of the week after being fired, he kept receiving calls of managers to ask him work stuff they should know, until my dad tells them to stop it, because he doesn't work there anymore and has no access to the critical data in his work account, only accessible by the company laptop which they gifted him. And if they wanted him to give them the raw data, he will do it, but he will not help at all since he is not getting paid. In less than a day, they call him to go to a meeting in the HQ to reincorporate him. And he says no, but they insisted, to the point where he went to the meeting, letting them know in advance he will not come back. The meeting came, and they offered him the same job, same payment, etc. And he declines. So, to convince him, the company said to him to make an offer to the HR department. By this point, my mum tells my dad to go nuts on the offer, to make a screw you to the company. Obviously, the HR representative made a counteroffer less good than the initial one, his former work back, to shine for saving money as a great negotiator. Also, he is one of the guys who agreed my dad was too expensive, so he was unnecessary. To which my dad says no and goodbye. One week after that, HQ and a big committee calls him, asking him why he's not working by now, because everything is upside down on the work. So, my dad tells them that the HR representative and the managers didn't accept his offer. After hearing that, they practically beg him to come back accepting his offer. In response, my dad founded his own consulting company. So now, they have to negotiate with him in other terms, as an external consultant. And the cost of the work now is a lot higher, due to it being a company and not a single person. So, magic happens. My dad has a job with better payment, and almost no field work. Just answering calls and giving advice to clueless people on how to do stuff. Making some maps and some meetings once a month, which he is the only one who knows how to do everything. It is more like a class than a meeting. I'm sorry if that was a tiny bit hard to track, the guy was Spanish, but that guy definitely writes better English than I write Spanish, so it was really good anyway. But that does sound like a big win for his dad, especially because he's his own company now, so he's going to be getting a lot more. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.